Well, here we are, video one of In the Kitchen with Owen. I'm just going to do a couple of simple meals to start off with. We're going to do a spaghetti bolognese and a lasagna, all at the same time, pretty much the same ingredients. So uh, I'm just going to get straight into this and let's start um, preparing all of our vegetables. I generally just grate all of my vegetables except for maybe the onion and the garlic, but otherwise it's all just uh, turned into uh, yeah, grated vegetables and cooked through. So I'll, um, I'll grate those and I'll be with you in a moment. As you can see, I've just grated a carrot. I've also got just a couple of little sticks of celery here. I've got six onions to chop up. I've got three capsicums, a whole tomato, and just a little bit of one that I had in the fridge. And I've got a whole knob of garlic, which I will be using the whole thing. Um, we're gonna add a three bean mix to the, uh, to the mix. A couple of cans of uh, tomato and some pasta sauce. Also got a bit of tomato paste here. But that's pretty much all you need. Might want to chuck in a bit of salt for flavour. Gonna get some uh, red wine as well. See what I've got up here. Yeah. There we go, just got some uh, Shiraz too to add some flavour. Um, we're using uh, two kilos of mince for um, both, or well, to go over both the lasagna and the spaghetti bolognese. We've got ricotta cheese to go between layers in our lasagna. I'm using wholemeal fresh pasta for the, uh, well for both the lasagna and the spaghetti bolognese. And we've got a uh, cheese to go on top of our uh, awesome lasagna. Well, I'm just going to continue preparing these vegetables, and I'll I'll see you in a moment. Just grab something to put all my prepared veggies in for the time being before I'm putting them in when I'm ready to cook. I generally like to prepare all of my vegetables and everything before I even start turning the uh, hot plates on or turning the gas on, whatever you've got. That's just me. Just going to chop these. Prepare my onions. I've just got a scrap spin over here, it kind of helps keep the work workplace clean. I've got two use two knives that I'm using today. Just my cleaver and just a small sharp knife. Just like to take the ends and everything off the onions and stuff with a sharper knife. The cleaver's not that sharp, but it does the trick. I have no professional qualifications in the kitchen. I just really enjoy food. Anyone can cook. It's just a matter of wanting to do it. And experiment. If, uh, if your experiment fails, well, at least you know not to cook that again. Yep. So these onions are getting to me just a little bit. 
little bit strong, they're not the strongest onions I've ever cut up though. Alright, now that we've uh, peeled our onions, we're just going to roughly chop them. Generally chop them into three across the middle, or maybe even two, depending on how big they are, and just, you know, a couple of chops through there. We're not trying to dice them, we're just trying to, you know, spread it out a bit. sharp knife generally helps uh, keep the onion fumes contained. It doesn't uh, squeeze the onion and, you know, smush it with the cleaver like I just have there. And it's, you know, released heaps and now my eyes are going for it. But, yeah, generally a sharp knife is the trick. People will tell you all sorts of stupid things to do to stop onions from hurting your eyes. But at the end of the day, if you don't want to get watery eyes from chopping onions, don't chop onions. matter. Right, I might just dump some of this into my pot so I've got a bit more room. So this will be the uh, pot that I'm using to cook it all in. You can use a frying pan, I normally do, but because I'm frying such a large amount, I'm just going to do it all in the pot. It's the largest thing I've got to cook in here. But if you have got something that's a bit, uh, bit smaller, or if you're using less ingredients, or even if you've got something a bit bigger, you're feeding more people, you know, we're going to get about, I don't know, let's see, those, those. We're going to get a lasagna that fills this uh, glass bowl, so we can probably cut that into, I know we might even get 10 pieces, maybe eight pieces of lasagna out of that, so it serves eight. And the spag bowl will, depending on, you know, how hungry people are, you can probably serve up to 12 people with that. But we'll see how we go at the end and see how many portions it makes. Alright, capsicum. DCD capsicum. I just generally cut the top out of it. Like so. The inners, and it all just comes out. There we go. Chuck whatever's inside out of it. I don't really like the white stuff in the middle, even though you know there's nothing wrong with it. It's probably full of nutrients, but it's you know it's just me. Excuse me for a moment. It's those onions making my nose water. Always wash your hands with soap. These uh, capsicum pieces don't have to be too small either. We're not trying to dice it, we're just trying to cut it into some smaller chunks. A little bit more than a centimetre by a centimetre, if you were wondering. got this all ready to start heating it up. I'm just going to call this uh, tomato, take the top out of it. Same with tomato, if I 
down while they're separating them because they do go in at separate times when actually uh, cooking the meal. Not that it really matters, but it's just the way I do it. Okay, garlic. This is Australian garlic, it's quite large um, cloves, they're not quite as strong as the traditional white stuff that uh, a lot of people do use, so um, that's why I'm using a whole knob, you might not want to put a whole knob in, um, you know, just uh, I guess put it into taste, but I really enjoy garlic, so... Just cut the ends off those. And we aren't completely dicing it, we're just, you know, cutting it into some smaller chunks. Or if you cut it too small, it'll disappear into the meal and you, you know, won't get that occasional crunch of a chunk of garlic. Stick that straight in with your onion. <clears throat> All right. I'm just going to get my mince ready. I don't really have to do much, just to mean open the packet. So we've got two kilos of mint here. Alright. So I'm just using uh, extra virgin olive oil to cook in today. This is actually quite a slow pour, so... You know, I'm not really putting in that much compared to what it may look. It's a good way to control how much you put in. Last thing you want to do is over oil it and it become quite a, I don't know, icky mess. So I'm just going to put that over the gas. It's um, on high, I'm just going to let it heat up and cook it through, let it get translucent. And then uh, once that's happened, we'll stick the mince in, cook that off, let it go brown, and then we'll start uh, throwing everything else in, sauce it, flavour it, and away we go. I'll be back in a moment. Thought I'd just move so you can see what I'm actually doing here. I've just got it in, I'm just gonna mix that through, make sure the oil covers everything. As I said, we've put this on high, nice big flames. Not big enough anyway. I'll just get that to cook off. You're going to want to break up your mince, don't just chuck it in as a big uh, load, otherwise it's going to be a bit hard to manoeuvre inside your pan.
literally just butcher it. You don't have to be polite. Not that you can get very much more butchered meat than mince. Now if you can see that, it's starting to get a bit uh, translucent, we'll just give it a little bit more and then we'll um, throw our mince in and get that cooking. I generally always cook on high, um, that's just how I like to do it, hard and fast. <laughs> um, I'll turn it down to low once it's time to simmer and everything's in and it's just got to cook. But that'll do for the uh, onion. I'll just give you a quick look at that. If you can see that. Let's get it in. Anything you spill, just uh, chuck over the top. Away you go. Stuff it down, try and get that onion mixed through it as much as possible at this point. Just so it gets to the bottom of the pan. You haven't got a you know your onion on the bottom burning, you want the cold mince to take the heat out of the pan now. And then it'll just slowly start to go grey and then brown off a bit, and then you'll be uh Right to start adding your other uh, other in, veg vegetables and stuff. Some people do it differently. You can cook the meat first if you really want to. There's nothing to say you can't. But uh, it's nice just to cook those onions and you know get those flavours inside the pan so that you know the meat takes it on as it browns off. It is much easier to cook if it's in a frying pan because you haven't got such high walls. You can actually scoop in underneath it, but. You know, you do what you've got with what you've got. Alright, that's really starting to go grey and you know start to cook now. So at this point I'm just gonna chuck in my tomato paste. I'm gonna use about what is it, two thirds of a can of uh, home brand tomato paste. So in that goes. and just uh, mix that through. It'd be nice if you can get it onto the heat first, but uh, in this pot I'm not gonna get the chance, so that's all right. But you know, if you can, yeah, get it onto the heat and cook it off a bit and then stir it through. And if you don't have any, it's not a vital ingredient, it just adds a bit more rich, um, uh, rich flavor to the tomato. Alright, that's all stirred through. We're really starting to get cooked now. So I reckon it's about time we throw in our grated veggies. They'll add a lot of moisture to the mix. Now get them in there, get them to the bottom, get that heat onto them.
Okay, my pot's starting to get quite hot now, so hot that I'm probably not going to be able to hold on to it anymore, so I'm just going to get my tea towel. So I can get a bit of a grip on there. Just be careful not to burn it if you're going to do this. Last thing you need to do is cause a kitchen fire. Just chuck in your tomatoes and your capsicum. You can put more of each in if you really want to. Like uh, this is just you know what I'm what I'm using today. Like I use three capsicums and one fresh tomato. You can use you know five fresh tomatoes and one capsicum, or you know, and I use three carrots and a couple of other vegetables I had in the fridge that I'm not actually too sure what they are, but they um, came in a soup mix. So I just grated them down. and going to chuck them in. Um, can't hurt, can it? Famous last words. Bit of celery, but you know you can you can pretty much make variations to these two meals. Like there's no set way to make them. There's no set ingredients you have to use. Everyone you know has a preference. Everyone has something that they like more than others. Like I'm going to use ricotta cheese in the middle, and you know some people might go, oh my god, but you know make it how you want it. I find this to be a really enjoyable meal though, once I've finished. Especially with the uh, addition of the... Traditionally, I wouldn't normally use um, uh, capsicum. Um, but I um, uh, was introduced to that maybe eight months ago. And it, it was amazing. You know, it really adds a different element to your spaghetti bolognese and your lasagna. Either either, whatever you're cooking. So now we've got all of our uh, vegetables and everything in, I'm going to stick the beans in. Three bean mix. What are they? Yeah. Great northern beans, small red kidney beans and green baby lima beans. So, if you want to buy those fresh and soak them yourself, by all means, go right ahead. This is just the cheats way or easy way. Now, the can comes with a lot of liquid in it. Don't add the liquid. We don't want to make this too runny, because if it's too runny, when we pull our lasagna out, it's just going to be slop and it's going to fall apart. So, just get that out of there. You don't have to make it dry or anything, but you know, just get the excess out, dump those in. You can hear that really bubbling now, that's all the liquid coming out of the uh, vegetables that I've put in, Most, mainly the carrot, um, the carrot and the tomato uh, are, are really quite... Um, you know, watery uh, plants. Once you cook them down, and they start to release the um, the moisture from them, and then your meat will more boil than it will cook. That's why you cook it first before adding your vegetables. Because if you add it all together, you end up releasing all the juices, and then you just boil your mince, and it kind of doesn't have that same flavour at the end. Mix those beans in. Everything is cooking away there quite well. Now we're going to add some salt. I've got Himalayan pink salt here. I reckon it's the best salt. You shouldn't use any other salt but this if you're a salt eater. Although um, iodized salt can be good for your health for certain people. But Himalayan pink salt. I did 15 turns, it's generally enough. 
Put it into taste though. If you don't want to add it, don't add it. Um, I never used to cook with uh, with salt, but someone uh, asked me how much salt I put in a meal once when they ate it because they thought it tasted a bit bland. And uh, well, I had none in it. And uh, ever since that day, I've been cooking with salt, and it really does. It brings out the flavour in food. But it still tastes good without it. Don't get me wrong. You know, don't feel like you have to add it. All right, see this? This is quite sloppy. Um, I've added no liquid. All I've put in was the vegetables and the uh, beans. The beans had a little bit of liquid on them, but you know, not to the extent that how you know sloppy that is. That's that's literally just the liquid that's come out of the vegetables. So don't add any extra liquid. other than what you intend to. So we've got our uh, cans of uh, tomato, diced tomato. We're literally just gonna dump those in over the top. Stir those in. All right, as you can see, my pot's almost about to be full. Yep, that's added a nice amount of liquid there. It's still n not, you know, slurry. But it's, uh, you know, we're, we're getting to the point now where it's got enough liquid that the pasta won't um, take it all out of it and will end up dry, you know. But you do have to get the ratio right. You know, if you don't have enough liquid in it, well, your lasagna is going to be, um, you know, it's going to be quite dry. So you're going to need to add sauce or something to it. But if you get your ratio right, then the pasta should be perfectly cooked. It should still have enough liquid in it that it's, um, you know, I guess self-sourcing. But, uh too much and your lasagna is going to fall apart the moment you try and scoop it up it's all just going to spill out the sides. Right, pasta sauce just add that extra flavour and you know to make it red. <laughs> Mix that in. You can almost stir this now that it's, you know, liquid enough. Bring everything up from the bottom and, you know, swap it all over. Make sure that you get mix it thoroughly, you know, mix it through. Because you can cook the bottom um, uh, too much and all the flavour will sit on the top and then you've got, you know, when you go and divvy it out well, yeah, you know, it's not an even spread but then again in a frying pan you really don't have that drama because you can just turn it alright, so we've got tomato liquid in there, we're just going to add a little bit of our wine and don't add too much because, you know, it is quite a strong flavour just uh, one, two, three, yep, that'll just about do it. Just a little bit of a splash. You know, a quick count to three. Mix it down. I try and steer clear of um, cooking with sugar. And when I say sugar, I mean added sugar in my ingredients. Um, I think these uh, diced tomatoes and the pasta sauce are quite low. I might be kidding myself, but 
Yeah, so like, you know, 3.4 grams per 100 grams in that one. Um, so in the whole tin, we've got, what, 13 and a half grams of sugar. So, yeah, okay, that's a fair bit. You know, look for stuff that doesn't have sugar in it, to be honest. It's, um, it's the best way to cook. It uh, really shows you the true flavour of food and the fact that uh, sugar isn't needed for things that taste good. And you know, this has only got 1.5 grams per 100, and you know, it's seven, 700 grams, so you know, we've only got, what, 10.5 grams of sugar in that whole jar. So you know, there's 33 grams of sugar in those, but other than that, you know, that, 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 that's everything that has sugar in it that's been put in it. Otherwise, it's all just vegetables and mints. Alright, now that we've got all of our ingredients in, it's starting to, um, uh, you know, starting to boil. Just give it that last stir. Alright, turn it down to low. If you've got a lid for your frying pan or for your um, pot like I'm using, stick your lid on. Uh, you're probably going to want to let that simmer for about, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes. After it's finished simmering, it's going to be at a nice point. You'll see a colour change. I um, mean, it's still quite um, orange there. Um, after about 15 or 20 minutes, it'll actually, you know, start looking a lot more red that's when you kind of know that it's ready to go. Like right now, you could probably serve this as bolognese and you'd get away with it, it's fine. But just give it that extra, you know, 15 to 20 minutes of cooking time. And um, yeah, away you go. Cook your pasta, however you're gonna do it, fresh or um, packeted. But yeah, I'll be with you in about 15 or 20 minutes and we'll uh, make this, uh, put this lasagna together. Alright, so it's been 15 minutes. I'm going to take my uh, mince mix off the oven. Cooker, pot tight, whatever you want to call it. Now, throughout that 15 minutes, I probably stirred it about four times, just as all the liquid rises to the top. Just get over there and take the lid off, give it a quick stir, bring everything back to the top. Now when you bring the uh, frying pan or your pot over to your bench, make sure you've got a tea towel or something down. The last thing you want to do is uh, burn a hole in your, in your bench top or mark the bench top at the very least. I'm just going to get this and stir this back through. So I've got liquid at the top there. Okay, so get your lasagna tray. I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, spray canola oil here just to uh, help prevent the uh, pasta from sticking in the oven. I've got the oven preheating at 200 degrees. Uh, once it gets up to 200 degrees, I'll kick it back to 180 to cook. But uh, I like to get it to a higher temperature than what I'm going to be cooking at to start it off with. So our pasta sheets. These are um, fresh egg pasta. Um, I'm sure you can buy these at any local supermarket. I just prefer to use these than the um, you know, dried um, solid ones. They're a little bit more malleable, a little bit easier to play with. And you just go ahead and pop those down. Don't feel like you have to use them, by all means, it all works the same. It don't matter if you overlap them either, because they don't take that long to cook and... Well, I don't know about you, but I like the pasta in them. Um, lasagna. I reckon it's one of the best parts after it soaks up all the juices and everything. 
All right, so I'm, uh, I haven't got a ladle, so I'm just going to be using my um, one cup measuring cup. We're just going to spoon this mince in, and we just get two cups, heaped cups, and I'll get my spatula. I'm just going to use that to make this a layer. Yeah, we might just get a little bit more. Try not to put too much liquid on the bottom layer if you can help it. Um, try and scoop around the liquid in the pot. So we've just got a uh, nice layer there that's got complete coverage. Alright. And then, now I've got this um, ricotta cheese here. I like using ricotta cheese, it's what I grew up using, it's what my mum used with me growing up. Um, it works, if you don't want to do that, you can always make some uh, cheesy white sauce if you really want to. But uh, this is just an easy kind of cheats way. That tastes great all the same. So we literally just uh, lay it out. Yeah, this is where it gets a bit messy. Literally just blob it in for these uh, inner layers. It's not that much of an issue spreading it out. Just get it in there. Spread it out as much as you can, just little dollops all over the place. And it doesn't even matter if you mix it in with the mince, because, uh, you know, it'll all be on the one layer. Let's just get this in there. Get onto our other layers. Yep. And that'll do it for that. Alright. Second layer of pasta. Literally just do the same thing. Pop it on. And we might do something a bit different this time. Well, not different, just uh, different orders. And we'll put our uh, ricotta cheese down on the pasta and see if it, uh, it'll help us spread it out a bit. Although we might just push it straight through to the uh, other layer. We'll see how it goes. Yep, you might even want to get a knife out to spread it. Just a butter knife. That works. All right, so what we'll do is just get a big spoon, dollop that in the middle, another one, put it at this end, another one, just get it all around. This is great. So as you can see, putting the um, ricotta cheese down first really uh, helps get an even spread. We'll just get the rest of this. Out of here, dollop it in that corner. Dollop it in that corner. Cool, get my knife, dropped it in there.
So, I'll just give this a stir again because the uh, meat and everything does start to sink. I think we've got it at a pretty good consistency. It might be a little bit too liquefied, but we should be okay. All right, let's get our next layer in. And you don't really have to avoid the liquid on this one. Just get this. Now, a lot of people would say, Oh, look, you've already filled it up. What are you going to do? Well, I like to overfill lasagna because uh, that's just how I do it. I'd like to have a um, much deeper lasagna tray, you know, maybe twice the size so I can do about five layers. That would be the ultimate, uh, ultimate lasagna for me, but I'm working with what I've got. So, we'll put in our pasta over the top. Now that was the last meat layer we're going to do. So now we're just going to put in a layer of pasta over the top. container of ricotta cheese. Dollop for you, dollop for you, dollop for you, dollop for you, and one for the rest of the family. A little bit for dessert. Alright. Let's just spread that out. And that'll probably do her. Alright, so now we just gotta finish this off. Get your grater, just get some uh, block cheddar cheese or whatever, just you know, tasty cheese, normal cheese, any sort of cheese, block cheese of some description. And grate a pretty generous amount of it. Uh, everybody loves cheese, except for those people that are uh, lactose intolerant. I apologise. That cheese is delicious. Or any other dairy allergy. A generous amount. I've probably only got about what a quarter of what I want. Try not to go too much plastic into your uh, lasagna. Hate to ruin the taste. All right, like I said, a generous amount of cheese. I'm just going to spread that over the top. Alright, cool. There's one lasagna. Ready to go in the oven.
So I've just popped it in. As I said, I preheated it to 200 degrees. I'll now turn it down to 180. And it'll cook for about, I don't know, I generally leave it in for about 30 minutes. You can go longer if you want. Just don't let the cheese burn. And um, away you go. So just to give you a bit of an idea, I've still got a large amount of my um, mince left or my bolognese left. Um, I'll definitely get 12 serves out of that, if not more. Uh, it's just a matter of having enough pasta for it all. I generally uh, cook it, put it all into uh, takeaway containers or you know little freezer containers, and um, you know put them all in my deep freezer, and I can have spaghetti bolognese, lasagna, and whatever else I cook whenever I really like. I just go pull it out and stick it in the microwave for three to five minutes after being frozen, and away you go. But there you have it. That's spaghetti bolognese and lasagna. I um. I had a lot of fun making the video, cooking the food this morning, so if, uh, if you did like it, um, yeah, tune in for the next, uh, next instalment. This has been In the Kitchen with Owen. Thanks very much. And there we have it, half an hour later, one awesome lasagna. Slice it up and serve.